Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So glad to have you here with me. Today's video is a very long awaited video. You guys have been asking for a very long time for me to show you exactly how it was that I built the waterfall. Now, unfortunately, I never took any video footage of me building the waterfall back in the day because I didn't expect to show this to anybody. But the waterfall has recently broken. There's a leak somewhere and I suspect that it is the tank or the container at the bottom that holds the water. So as I tear this today to try and get fixed, hopefully you guys will be able to see exactly how it is that this waterfall is built, how it works, and maybe it'll give you a couple of different ideas of how you can build one similar to this inside your outdoor aviary. So as you can see, so far, all I've been doing is trying to take away all of the rocks that are on the bottom portion of the waterfall. And right below these rocks is a tarp. Now this tarp is what pretty much guides the water throughout the waterfall. This black tarp runs underneath all of these rocks and keeps going all the way up to the top of the waterfall where the waterfall spillway is at. And the purpose of this tarp is to make sure that any water that makes it through the rocks and goes down doesn't go into the soil so you don't lose the water it pretty much slides down this tarp underneath the rocks and gets to this section here where it then falls into the bucket that's underneath this container that holds all of the water now you want to make sure that when you're building your waterfall that you don't have any sections within the rocks that allow the water to go through because you want the water to roll on top of the rocks as it makes its way down to this section, but we'll go over that a little bit later in the video. What I'm gonna be doing now is pretty much taking away all of the screws that hold this mesh on top of the bucket. And pretty much this mesh is put here because this is what gives the support to all of the rocks that are on top. And it makes it look like a seamless or pondless waterfall where it kind of fills up with water, but it goes around the sides and then falls into this container. Inside of this container, I have to pull out the water pump, which is the one that pushes the water from the container all the way up to the waterfall spillway and makes it come down the waterfall again. So I'm gonna be taking away this mesh first, removing the pump, and then I have to get this container off and out of the ground because I feel like something in this container is broken. Maybe the bottom, and I can't see it. I've pulled it apart before and I've looked inside just to see if I spot any holes or any cracks in this plastic containers and I can't see anything but this has to be the problem as to why I'm losing all of the water. So once I get this pulled out here we'll be able to take it outside inspect it a little bit closer and see exactly where the leak is coming from. But as you can see it is not easy to get this container out of the ground. This is pretty much settled into the ground over the past two and a half three years and it is very difficult to get this removed. So let's try to get this out, take it outdoors, and let's see exactly what is wrong with it. All right guys, so I've been looking at this after taking it outside and I can't really quite figure out exactly what is wrong with it or where it's leaking from. Now this originally had a hole on the side which I patched up and I thought it might be coming out from that section, but it seems like it's patched pretty good. It shouldn't be leaking from there. So I'm gonna leave this aside for a second here. I will give it a good rinse and wash to get all of this dirt and mud off of it to see if I spot any holes in a second. But let's go back inside of the aviary so you can see the mess that I have in there now. And this, this drives me crazy because the majority of the birds in here are breeding right now and doing something like this really stresses them out. So I'm trying to finish this as quick as possible so that I don't cause them any more stress. Now you're probably wondering what type of pump do I use for the waterfall. This is a very simple pump that I bought at Lowe's Home Improvement and it ran about $100. Now there's a variety of different pumps that you can purchase from a variety of different locations. I only suggest that you do get a pump that has a good capacity of pumping water out. You don't wanna buy anything cheap because then it's just not gonna push enough water through the waterfall and it's not gonna look as natural or as good as it should. From this portion of the video, we can see a little bit better how the tarp is or how it runs underneath of all of these rocks. Now keep in mind that this tarp goes from the bottom of the waterfall all the way up to the top underneath all these rocks and it kind of folds in a U shape going upwards and it's pinned with rocks on the outer portion of the tarp and rocks on the inner portion of the tarp. So it creates a U. And what this does is that it allows any water that escapes through the cracks of the rocks 
it goes underneath the rocks, falls into this tarp, and then it continues to come back all the way down into the bottom of the waterfall where the tank is at. Guys, you're not going to believe what I just found. Again, if you've been keeping up with the videos that I've been posting on a weekly basis, you probably remember a video that I made about a bird that escaped the aviary. And this was because they built a nest right next to the entrance of the aviary and I forgot to lock the double door behind me and it was the red throat parafinches. Now that male escaped, unfortunately I was never able to find him or capture him again, but I did reintroduce a new male into the aviary so that the female would not be alone. I destroyed the nest that they had built, or the original pair where the male escaped, I destroyed that nest, took it away from that section, hoping that they would find a different location, but apparently this female that was in the aviary has shown the new male the location where she wanted the nest to be built at and it is the same exact spot where she had built a nest with the previous male now unfortunately since i'm working on this waterfall there's no way that these guys are going to be coming back into this nest to be able to incubate these eggs and they have four eggs already which means that they have most probably started their incubation and I have now disturbed this because I am fixing the waterfall. So I have no option but to remove these eggs from their nest, place them in the incubator, and hopefully find a pair of societies that will take care of them. Now, I wish I could have left them here with them. It would have been amazing to film them taking care of these chicks and their development inside of this very unique nest. But since this is probably going to be a two day thing where I'm coming in and out of the aviary for two days trying to fix this, there's just no way that these eggs are going to survive without the proper incubation from the parents and the parents are not going to come back into this section since I am obviously here for hours now working on this part of the aviary. So hopefully I'm able to save them. Let's take them indoors. Let's put them inside of the incubator and let's see what happens. All right, guys, let's get back to work. We're going to start off by, first of all, taking away this mesh from the top of the container so that we're able to give it a good rinse with water and see if we can spot any hose that it may have. From there, maybe we'll figure out if we're able to patch that hose and get this fixed, or if the hose is too big, we'll definitely have to buy a new container. Hopefully, I can find one if that's the case because it's kind of last minute, and I don't think that my local stores like Home Depot or Lowe's carry this specific type of container. So let's see what happens. Fingers crossed that we're able to get this fixed today. And there it is, my worst fears. This thing has a huge hole all the way at the bottom of the container. And unfortunately, this is just too big to patch. I could do something, find something to patch it up, but I don't want to do this as it sits right at the bottom and maybe with the force of the water or the weight of the water, it could crack again. And as you've seen, this thing is a pain to get in and out and it disturbs the birds a lot while I'm doing this. So I want to be able to get this fixed the right way and do it once. So I jumped into my local marketplace and I started to look for a variety of different options. And luckily I was able to find someone in my area that had the same exact one that I needed. Now, how lucky is that? That is insane that I was able to find that within one day. So I'm very happy I picked it up. Now, here we are the next day and we are going to start installing this back inside of the aviary. And we want to start by getting a mesh again to cover the top of this container. So we're going to cut a section of mesh that is the same size of the container. We're going to screw it to the container, cut all the edges so that it is the same shape of our container. And then we're going to reinforce the top side with a thicker gauge mesh because this section is the one that falls underneath that big rock or the last rock of the spillway and what i used before was a piece of wood and i don't know if you remember seeing that when i pulled the old container out but i wanted to put something different now that would not rot with time wood unfortunately with water falling on it does rot away so i want to have more of a permanent fix to this and these are little tiny things that when you first build it you don't notice and after some time you're like man i wish i would have changed this i wish i would have changed that and now that i got a second chance to fix this that is one of the things that i had in mind changing so with this thicker gauge mesh it's going to hold that last big rock um, that we have in the waterfall and it's something that will last a very long time and it won't rot away like the wood 
guys we're almost there this is the home stretch i am almost done installing this and i'm getting more and more excited as i get near the end because i can't wait to finish this be out of the aviary so i can give the birds the peace and quiet that they need to continue their breeding now in order to get this into the ground i do have to kind of shovel a bit around since the previous container that was in here was letting a lot of the water go underneath it kind of unsettled the soil and it made the soil a little bit different than what it should be and this new one kind of doesn't fall into the right place so i did have to shovel around a bit and it was kind of hard to get it into its new location but after removing some soil and making the proper adjustments i was able to fit this into the proper area and kind of get it situated where i wanted it to be now once i got this settled into the ground I can start laying this tarp back on top of this container and then I can start repositioning all the rocks back into their proper place to get this waterfall going again. Now as you're going to see, when I start to put the rocks back into their location, I kind of didn't remember exactly where each rock went and this is something that you have to keep in mind while you are building this waterfall. Each rock is going to have a different size and a different shape so it's almost like a puzzle piece and when you build a waterfall like this it's almost like you're trying to build the puzzle you're gonna put a rock here you're gonna put a rock there and sometimes it may not be the right place for it so you're gonna find yourself having to switch these rocks around a lot until you kind of get the right shape that you're looking for and this is pretty much what I did when I built the waterfall you have to have a large amount of rocks different shapes different sizes so that you can get this waterfall built now once we finish getting all of these rocks into the proper position what you want to do is you need to fill the little small cracks and crevices that are in between each rock because like i've said before you want the water to flow on top of these rocks making its way all the way to the bottom of your waterfall because it looks way more natural so what i like to use for this is cement now i've used in the past a different type of uh, foam material that is specifically made for waterfalls but i've found that with time and over the years this kind of rots away and it starts to let the waterfall leak and the water starts to seep in between the rocks but once i switched over to sealing these cracks with cement i stopped having this problem so this is what i like to use now after i seal this whole section with cement what i like to do is i place small pieces of rocks on top of the wet cement so once it seals and it cures these rocks are stuck in there and this gives it more of a natural look instead of just having this grayish cement placed around the edges now you have these tiny little rocks encrusted in between the cement and it makes it look more natural now that we got that section sealed we can start to focus on the bottom part of the waterfall the section that is laid on top of the bottom container you want to lay out your tarp and make it into a circle where it pretty much covers all of the container but you want to leave the edges facing upwards almost like you have walls what this is going to do is that it is going to allow the water to fill up and then as the water hits that level it kind of falls through the sides and it goes back down into the container below so it makes it look like it is seamless like there is no container at the bottom the water is just pretty much disappearing and this is one of the best ways that i've found or one of the nicest ways to have this waterfall built so once we get this section finished down here as you can see we're pretty much done and now all we have to do is wait for the cement to cure i usually give it about 24 to 48 hours let it cure very good once it cures we're going to give the waterfall a good rinse through to make sure that we get all of the bad stuff out of here rinse it all out once we rinse it all out we're going to add some fresh water and we are going to be on our way to having this waterfall working again all right guys well this is going to be the end of another video that is pretty much it this has been a long two-day build i started early morning on saturday and was able to finish and have this waterfall running again by monday i actually finished on a sunday but had to let the cement cure for at least a good 24 hours i hope that you got a chance to see exactly how it is that this waterfall works some of the components of it the pump 
the container at the bottom, how I use the tarps that run underneath all of the rocks, and how building it is kind of like building a puzzle. You have to play with a variety of different size rocks to kind of give your waterfall shape. If you've enjoyed the video, like always, remember to hit the thumbs up button, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already, and I hope that you guys have a wonderful day. We will see each other in the next video.